Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gabrielle Columbro, Executive Director of Phenos, to the stage. <clears throat> Hello. Good morning, everyone. It's been almost two years since I actually see people in person. It's as someone said yesterday, everyone looks much taller than on Zoom. So <laughs> um, I see so many new faces, so I'm really excited to be here. Um, thanks for coming in, you know, these uh, still pretty unprecedented times. Um, I'm, again, there's something to building community in person that is just, uh, you know, not replaceable on Zoom. So I'm, I'm really excited to see you all here. Um, we have a great day and I hope you folks are going to enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to start with reminding you that uh, in case you're also in New York, um, <laughs> we have another conference coming up in a month. Uh, uh, again, it's been probably two years now that we haven't been uh, uh, seeing people. So uh, again, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, actually, what you can do is let your colleagues know in New York on the other side of the pond. Uh, uh, this is a, a unique opportunity to catch up with everything that is happening in open source and financial services. Um, I want to start by thanking our sponsors, uh, uh, Glue42, Rocket, Canonical, and Open Mainframe Project. Uh, again, uh, thank you. This will not be possible without you. Um, and most importantly, I'd like you to, you know, let's start with a couple of service announcements before we, we enter into the keynotes. Um, make the most of this conference. We have a networking app umbrella in case you haven't connected to it yet. Um, help us make some noise. This is a community conference. So uh, feel free to engage on Twitter, on LinkedIn with us. Uh, those are the hashtags there. Um, of course, open source is pretty generic, but uh, OS FinServe, OSSF London. And then finally, uh, you know, I, I want to thank you uh, uh, for abiding to the code of conduct uh, that is published under the Linux Foundation website and also, uh, you know, to the health and safety requirements. Let's make it, uh, you know, an inclusive event for everyone. Uh, I know that we are, uh, you know, on the, on the strict side when it comes to vaccine and mask requirements, but as you know, uh, we want to make sure that this is inclusive for everyone uh, uh, feeling comfortable to join us. So uh, again, thank you so much for being here. We, we really appreciate it. And I hope you have a great day. So um, I want to give you uh, a little bit of, a, of the state of our community. Um, a lot has changed in the last two years uh, in, in open source and financial services since the last time we, we you know, met our community in person in New York. Um, we have now reached, uh, as Finos, uh, uh, almost 50 members and most importantly, as an open source community, we are really measured in the valuable projects that we produce for the industry. Uh, and we have now almost, again, 50 between uh, open source projects, either in incubating or active stage, uh, or our special interest groups. That's a new addition since the last time we talked. We now have six special interest groups that are running um, where, you know, the very diverse set of uh, uh, institutions that composes our membership and beyond, again, this is an open source community, uh, can talk about common challenges like open source readiness, inner source, DevOps mutualization, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, Apart from the sort of pretty logo slide that I always uh, enjoy showing, considering that we started, you know, only three years ago with 15 members. Um, one thing I want to point out is that we added our associate membership uh, in the last year. Uh, our associate membership is for uh, non-profits, uh, uh, govern governmental uh, agencies, and standard bodies. We have seen uh, industry consortia, uh, which you're probably familiar with uh, from this industry, coming to Finos um, to enable them to accelerate their open standardization process through open source. Um, you know, open standards and open source are, are sort of two very different worlds that we're seeing more and more coming together. And so I'm really excited to see uh, firms like ISDA, ISLA, and several of the other uh, associate members that you see there, uh, you know, 
realizing the benefit of open source in accelerating and, and really bringing their standards uh, to where developers are, to where engineers are. Um, we talked about members, we talked about projects. Um, the reality is we have seen over the last two years, 2020 was a huge year for us, but 2021 has also shown uh, not only a growth in our members, in our projects, but um, our contributors. Uh, we have now reached over a thousand contributors uh, over time. Um, and of course, in order to support that, we have grown our team. We have several new faces today that hopefully you're going to meet uh, and, and uh, you know, put a face uh, to a name uh, after two years of maybe meeting them on Zoom or, or in any other platform of your choice. Um, so I really do hope uh, today uh, is, is a great occasion to again meet other contributors first and foremost, but also to connect and ask questions and provide feedback to the, to the Finos team. Um, for those of you who are new, this is our third year uh, as Finos. We have just a little over three years. And, uh, you know, as I said, we've seen a drastic growth in contributors, especially in 2020. Um, you know, 2018, we launched, uh, we started having massive support, not only from financial institutions, but also from large uh, uh, tech vendors, uh, more and more, you know, fintech vendors, consortia have been joining the foundation. But again, uh, there's only so much that funding brings you, uh, you know, we are measured in the projects that we produce. And so 2020 has marked a stark difference in uh, our uh, project portfolio. We've had major contributions from financial institutions, um, Goldman Sachs, Citi, Morgan Stanley, Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan. Um, those were honestly firms that until just a few years ago, uh, you know, you're not typically seeing them as, uh, uh, you know, initiating an open source contribution, especially when you're talking about large, uh, you know, chunks of intellectual property built over years. Uh, and so when I look at our leaderboard, by the way, if you're not familiar, uh, we have all of our metrics being uh, published uh, on uh, the LFX Insight platform. Uh, um, lfx.linuxfoundation.org, I believe the URL is. Um, when I look at our top six contributors, um, it is, frankly, unprecedented to see that all of our top contributors come from actually four different financial institutions. Uh, and while I admit, you know, that code and line of code is maybe not the only or the best metric to measure contributions, we can have a whole different conversation about this. Uh, you know, we, we always say it's not just about code, it's documentation, it's issues, it's participating to, to our meetings. When you're trying to build a community, code is important. Code provides sort of that anchoring asset, that very concrete asset that allows us to build, uh, you know, a lively community out there. So we're very proud and we want to thank all of you, I see many of our contributors uh, in this room, um, you know, for continuing to trust Finos and to help us grow the ecosystem, being advocates for us. This is the best advocacy uh, that you can do for us. Now, I want to talk to you about a couple of projects um, that helped us, you know, get to where we are. Um, they're very different in nature, and I think that's the strength of our community. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Legend. Um, some of you might know it as Alloy, uh, some of you might know it as Pure. Uh, this is a project that we announced, in fact, in the last OSSF we had in person in 2019, um, Goldman Sachs announced the intention to open source their logical data modeling platform uh, that is used throughout the firm. Years and years of intellectual property. Um, throughout 2020, we ran a pilot to really validate the interest of the industry. Uh, it is important to, you know, make sure that this is not just dumping code out there, that there is actually a strong interest. And we proved, working with ISDA, that, uh, you know, we could apply modifications to the, uh, uh, you know, come up with collaborative uh, modifications to the uh, CDM, the common domain model, and push it back into the canonical source much faster than uh, in other um, sort of, you know, more abstract ways of collaborating, let's say. Um, 
And the rest is history. The, op the software was open sourced in April 2020. Uh, Goldman Sachs has continued to put uh, um, contributions out there and modules of the platform out there. Um, we know at least about three major financial institutions that are now adopting the software. We are seeing more and more contributions coming uh, to the software itself. Um, there's some pretty big announcements coming out later in the year when it comes to integrating the software. We know about at least three platforms or three open source projects that are going to be integrated with uh, the platform. But one point that I want to make here is, and we'll touch on this in a little bit, there's certainly a value for the technology organization here. You know, Download the software, you can use it, it's fully open source, it's developed in an open first way. But what we've noticed is that uh, by hosting the platform, if you go to uh, uh, finos.org slash legend, you can get access to a hosted version of this platform. We have invited industry participants to directly collaborate on the models, on the data models, with the goal of producing you know, industry-wide data models. And so I think that's been a really eye-opening experience for us. Uh, in addition to, again, having a software that you can take and install in your organization, we are hosting a venue that is very concrete, it's very code-centric, to really build, hopefully, industry-wide models that can be used by the different parties that participate in the financial services workflow and by regulators. So, really exciting project. We'd love to talk to you more about it. I know that there are folks here from the Legend team, so feel free to connect, and uh, we hope to see this project continue growing in our community. FBC3, kind of moving all the way on the standard side of the house. Uh, I see some of the maintainers here in the crowd. Um, this is one of our earliest projects, was originally uh, contributed uh, uh, by a vendor. Uh, uh, it has grown since then to a standard for desktop interoperability uh, that is now widely used in the industry, both by technology vendors and by financial institutions. It's a very lively project. We, are, uh, we have released the 1.2 version uh, this year. There's training being built. Uh, there's developer tools like the Workbench being uh, put out there. Uh, and the new version of the standard is being developed. And uh, that's my call to action here. Um, the team is actively seeking for input in terms of what should be in the 2.0 version. We want this to be uh, you know, use case driven. We want this to be, to so to be solving uh, problems that are you know, across every uh, uh, um, sort of constituent of the industry. And again, I'm pretty proud to be able to show all those logos out there. Uh, you know, it's not easy <laughs> to get a logo from a bank on a slide out there. And so this really speaks volumes to, you know, how adopted this standard has been and how, you know, publicly uh, the industry is getting sort of familiar with, with open source projects and open standards. Now, another initiative that again, just food for thoughts for you today to, you know, have some conversation starters. Um, since the last time we talked, we announced uh, our Open RegTech initiative. Um, it is, you know, if you think about open source, it's typically about collaborating on common requirements uh, uh, that apply to a broad set of participants. It's typically about mutualizing costs that it's not necessarily differentiating. Uh, together with our board, we really thought that mutualizing open source, mutualizing regulatory implementation, and hopefully one day, hopefully before my grandkids grow up, having regulators also produce machine readable regulation in open source format, it's an absolutely uh, promising uh, uh, avenue for us to uh, you know, deliver value to the industry and to also become indispensable for this industry. Um, there's been a lot of excitement in uh, the firms that participate to our community. We have a special interest group. Uh, we have conversa active conversations with regulators. Um, we have uh, uh, actually a keynote later today, a panel uh, around this. So I hope uh, you're going to take a look and hopefully join our SIG. We really need a lot of input and support to drive this initiative. That said, uh, where are we in the industry? You know, Finos is certainly a, a, a success story when it comes to open sourcing financial services, uh, but there's much more to be done. Um, we have just announced about an hour ago 
our first annual state of open source in financial services that was built in partnership with the Linux Foundation Research, uh, Wipro, GitHub, and Scott Logic. I want to thank all of our partners. It's been a six months effort. This report is meant to create a baseline for our um, you know, work over the next years. Where are the biggest challenges? Where are the biggest opportunities? Um, if you haven't downloaded it yet, you can sign up there and uh, uh, it's freely available for our community. We actually haven't even have an open data set uh, out there. So I would love to see what you guys come up in terms of insights uh, out of the data that got produced. Uh, I want to show you a couple of um, highlights from the survey, uh, which I think are going to be useful as you go through the conference today and hopefully as you engage in open source activities in financial services. Um, I think one of the most heartening example, uh, you know, uh, items that we found, one of the most uh, uh, encouraging aspects is that uh, financial services has, is now on par with other industries when it comes to uh, really understanding the potential for open source. And let's not forget, financial services has been a pioneer in several technologies as one of the uh, several technology innovations. Um, as one of, you know, one CTO from an investment bank put it, you know, financial services has pioneered things that then became famous or mainstream because of open source. And so there is clearly an understanding that open source can be a differentiator for innovation, for, you know, better time to market, reduce total cost of ownership. That's very much the, you know, typical reasons why other industries have historically looked at open source. So that's great. Um, and not only about, it's not only about publishing new code, but it's really also about influencing upstream technologies. Like we joined the Linux Foundation last year. One of the main reasons was to provide, you know, a unified vision of financial services as to what are the very specific requirements to this industry has, you know, when it comes to Kubernetes, Linux, and several other sort of upstream components uh, that compose the, the technology stack. That said, the road is still long. There's only 8% of firms that has a clear policy that encourages open source upstream contribution. So a lot more to do here. That said, at least we're making big progress on consumption, 65% uh, of respondents have a policy for consumption, but only 35% as an OSPO. I have seen several of the firms in this room, you know, gearing up their organization to have an open source program office, but it's still, still not on par uh, what we see out there. And we think one of the key reasons is the lack of strategic leadership yet. Uh, again, massive advances in terms of how open source is perceived, um, but still not at the strategic level uh, that we have seen in other industries. So much more to go and we'll continue to work uh, on this area, specifically to our open source readiness special interest group. Um, we are now, you know, we've been working over the last years to grow the maturity of the industry um, when it comes to policies, process, and strategic understanding. Um, the group has been rebooted, I would say, earlier in the year. It's working on an open source maturity model that hopefully is going to provide a framework for you to follow and also, you know, actionable um, shared content, actionable guidance as to how you can, you know, uh, uh, enhance uh, the open source maturity of your organization. Um, wrapping. Um, you know, I keep hitting on this idea of open source maturity. And that is fundamentally because we think that is going to unlock uh, higher and higher levels of value when it comes to uh, you know, collaborating in the open. Uh, most organizations start their journey you know, thanks to the technology organization, whether it is to uh, retain talent or recruit talent, whether it is to increase efficiency or to de-risk their investments. You know, we have several projects there and I hope you're going to come out by the end of today knowing how those projects can help your technology organization. But as the maturity grows, we have seen over the last two years uh, the business engaging directly in open source. Open source is beyond code, uh, whether it is for better sort of working with your customers, better working with the regulators, or just you know, collaborating with your peer organizations. 
Uh, as I mentioned, for example, the legend and financial objects initiatives that are built over legend are showing us how building collaborative industry models delivers value direct to the business. Um, and ultimately, you know, our goal, as we said, there's still more maturity that needs to be built in the industry, but we think, uh, uh, you know, there is uh, uh, the possibility to get to, you know, uh, a strategic value for firms. We have seen some of the most mature firms uh, really adopt what I would say is, is big tech list keep secret. Uh, you know, open source is a way that uh, uh, enables, you know, as the industry moves to platforms, as, as the industry tries to uh, uh, standardize on, you know, uh, um, certain developer platforms, um, you know, open source can deliver can, can really and should be a technology pillar at the highest level of uh, your organization. Um, lots of areas uh, where we can collaborate. We're gonna talk about it today. That's uh, the top five areas that, uh, um, you know, the service shown as potential uh, uh, for collaboration. Luckily, we have several areas, several projects that are ongoing in these areas. And uh, last but not least, uh, I wanna close on another really important initiative that has gone on this year uh, since we last talked. We have created a diversity and inclusion special interest group. Uh, there has been a huge amount of participation from pretty much any uh, represent you know, any constituents of our membership. Um, we have set goals uh, for our team representation and we are actively working on our community goals. Look, uh, diversity and inclusion is a huge problem as much as the financial services industry as in open source communities. So this is, you know, a pretty high order task, uh, but we want to make sure that, again, this is a community that uh, leads when it comes to diversity and inclusion uh, uh, as, you know, actually the survey has shown that whilst the uh, percentage is relatively low, there's twice as much female representation in our community than in uh, comparable open source communities that have been, you know, surveyed through other surveys. So, you know, there's hope out there and we will continue to make this a priority uh, moving forward. And with that, I want to thank you and I hope you have a, a great conference. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs>